This is a steam stack, and they're dotted all over Manhattan. Nowhere on earth are they more common. In fact, New York is one of the few cities in the world that relies on steam to heat its buildings, including some of its tallest, most iconic towers. Our customers are behind us. All the skyscrapers, the Empire State Building, if you look, the UN is right up the river a little bit. You have the Chrysler Building. They get the steam directly from Con Edison. I think steam's an old technology. It works. It's been around. Technology's coming up to make it more efficient. This is our core business, is to make reliable, cheap steam for the largest city in the United States. So Philadelphia, Boston, all those steam systems together don't even equal the size of this. This is the story of how steam shaped New York City. It's horrendous. Yeah, the orange. <laughs> it's so ugly. I hate the orange. Yeah. The first thing I noticed was the steam. Really loud and a lot of smoke coming out of it. Well, and I've definitely Blast heard me. people that don't live here be like, oh, those things smell so, so gross. gross. Yeah. And then I walk through it and I'm like, does it? Am I am, am I just used to yeah, this? Like, just... it doesn't smell that bad. <laughs> like, like, there are worse like... smells. Bright orange and white stripes, steam billowing out of dozens of feet above the city streets. These stacks should stand out. But for the average New Yorker, they're just part of everyday life. So what are these mysterious pipes actually for? I'm not sure, you know, I don't really pay attention. I just go from point A to point B. <laughs> just to release underground, like, uh, uh, pressure, right? Like gases underground. Yeah, like to release, like, I water vapor. I mean, by the smell of it, you know, it's not just water. <laughs> the answer? Manhattan runs on steam. 27 billion pounds of it per year, in fact. Steam moves through vast networks of underground pipes, providing the island's buildings with the energy they need for heating and cooling. These pipes allow pressurized steam to escape, directing it away from passers-by. Without the steam system, New York would look quite different. The city's tallest buildings would need a separate space to store truckloads of coal. They would also need chimneys, spewing out clouds of soot high above the city. This was Manhattan before the introduction of steam. Before the dawn of the 19th century, the wood-burning fireplace served as the primary source of heat for most New Yorkers. Later, coal became the fuel of choice. But coal was hard to transport and proved to be a cumbersome, inconvenient way to heat a home. But as the city grew, it needed a more efficient and manageable energy source. In 1876, experimental inventor and engineer Birdsill Holly of Lockport, New York, stumbled upon a new way to heat his home, steam. This new source of heat was not just novel, it was efficient. Soon he extended his system to heat the homes of his neighbors. Lockport, New York, now ran on steam. By 1936, New York's steam system was the largest in the country. With 65 miles of main pipes and six steam generating plants serving 2,500 buildings. In 1954, gas and electric provider Consolidated Edison acquired the New York Steam Company and has been responsible for the city's steam ever since. Today, steam's journey begins at one of the city's steam production facilities. Here, machines more than 10 stories high generate more than 3 million pounds of steam per hour. This station provides about 52 to 55 percent of all the steam in Manhattan and it supplies all the electricity south of 36th Street down to the tip of the battery. You have 105 miles of piping that are underneath the streets.
you have all these plants that feed this 105 miles of pipework. If you look on the northern fringe, it's 96th Street on the west side and all the way down to the tip of the battery and the full width of Manhattan. If you look at all of the, the big customers that we have, they could equal up to about 3.2 million customers, so people that we supply steam to. The majority of customers use steam for heat, but it does serve other purposes. Heat, hot water, obvious. Air conditioning, you mean you use steam to make that air conditioning? Well, there are different types of machines out there that take that steam and they can convert it into chilled water. Sterilization, you can see how important that is in hospitals. And humidification, you have a lot of laundromats too and that need steam for steam cleaning. The plant needs around 125,000 gallons of water per hour to provide the city with the steam it needs. We need water for steam. Heat the water up, it becomes steam. But we need it to be pristine. There can't be any minerals in that steam. So we actually take New York City drinking water, which is probably one of the cleanest drinking waters in the world, and we purify it. Once the water is purified, it is directed to a boiler. Mostly we burn gas here. That gas comes out and there's a ball of fire inside this big box with a big boiler. And that ball of fire is probably about 2,500 to 3,000 degrees. And you have tubes on the inside surface of the big box or the big boiler. And inside there, you have water. It's here that water becomes steam. That steam leaves the boiler and goes through a network of piping to any one of Con Edison's customers. Three of Con Edison's six plants generate both steam and electricity through a process called cogeneration. The steam generated from this plant goes into those pipes underground and it gets distributed throughout the city. And they, they go and they tap off and go to a customer and they feed into the basement of a building. And from there, it's metered and then it goes for whatever they need. If they need heating, they need cooling, they need uh, sterilization, whatever they need for it. So, this is where it starts. So Con Edison brings district steam in the street, and it comes down through this pipe. So all of Brookfield Place, all 8 million square feet of retail, office, and the common area, the Winter Garden that you see, and the you know, main area, it all gets fed from our central plant. So it all comes in here, goes up through these pipes over around here, gets metered by Con Edison. They have their meters. And then, boom, this is where we pay our bill from, it's from these meters all the way back into this header on this side of things over here. And from here, we take it and we distribute it out to the buildings. Take the 180 pound Con Edison steam, and then that gets reduced down to 60, then down to 15, and it's 15 pound steam that the buildings are seeing. And then from here, we then distribute that and send it up a riser in a low pressure pipe, and it goes out to the building. The buildings don't see anything more than 15 pounds. When you maintain a system this vast, things happen, and you have to maintain it. So if there's a leak around a series of valves, that steam's going to work its way up. Well, in the event that that steam gets up, you don't want it to spread out. And that's where steam stacks come in. You want to contain inside that stack so that nobody gets hurt. And then it buys time to get the materials and the labor together and go and fix it. These stacks redirect vapor released through a manhole. And even though they are each used temporarily, they are all over Manhattan. Steam looks like it's here to stay, but there is room for improvement. Sustainability is a big word nowadays. But we've been doing this 
for years. This plant, from 1926 to probably in the mid-60s, burned coal. We swapped over to cleaner fuels. But that's our backup fuel. We rarely run on that fuel. Our primary source of fuel is gas, very clean methane. That methane is a significant amount of times much cleaner burn than the fuel oil or the coal or the kerosene that has been burned in the past. We're looking for electrification. We're looking for carbon capture. Whatever carbon that's left from the emissions to capture that. As we push further into the 21st century, New York City will continue to move toward carbon-free energy sources. But for now, steam co-generated at the city's power plants remains a sustainable option. We want to stay in business for another 140 years. I mean, we've been growing these last 140, and we're going to continue growing for another 140.